What's going on everyone, Suresh here, 221B Tactical. Today we are going to change it up a little bit and rather than talk about gear for the tactical world, we're gonna talk about gear for the fitness world. Uh, obviously fitness, a very large part of being a police officer or in the tactical space. So we are gonna talk about something that so many of you have asked questions about. The shoes that I wear in the videos of me training a lot of you have probably seen these shoes somewhere before, either out on the trails or in the gym. They're called Vibram Five Finger Shoes, actually five toe shoes, as you can see here. Uh, the premise of this is it is a ultra minimalist shoe. It allows each toe to go into its individual sleeve, if you would, kind of like wearing a pair of gloves, what 221B Tactical is known for. and. It has some benefits and it has a lot of supporters. It has a lot of naysayers. So I decided to try these shoes about two years ago uh, was the first time I tried them. And uh, these are my second pair. And I gotta tell you that there's a lot of benefits to them, but there are some downsides. So I'm gonna go over them today. A lot of people asking questions when they see me wearing them, obviously they're bright yellow, so a lot of people notice them in the photos and videos, asking questions about what do you like about them, do you like them, um, why do you wear them, what are the benefits, all, all the questions I'm gonna try to answer today and uh, hopefully help clear the air and maybe allow you to make the decision on one, whether you wanna give these a try. So I started primarily wearing these shoes on leg day. Uh, Obviously, when you're doing leg exercises, many, most of you have probably seen people who are deadlifting, um, deadlift in uh, no shoes at all. They're just deadlifting in their socks, uh, barefoot or in their socks. There's a reason for that. You have a more natural feel for the ground and you get, a, a for me, a more natural lift on the ground when deadlifting with no, without regular shoes on. I would always deadlift uh, when I did deadlifts in just my socks, I would also take off my shoes. I don't need to do that anymore with these because it is such a minimalist shoe and it has such a thin sole that it actually, the whole premise of this is to make you feel like you're not wearing a shoe at all, is to give you that barefoot feel, especially when you're running, it gives you that barefoot running feel, which it does. I can I can attest to that. It does give you that barefoot running feel. And if you are running uh, off the road or uh, on trails with rocks or anything like that, or if you're running on the road and you encounter some rocks or anything like that, you are going to feel most every rock or stone um, or crack in the roadway. Um, something that you do get used to, you, of course, you avoid big stones. You avoid big stones anyway on the trails and uh, in the road. So, um, ultra thin design up here, which makes it very breathable, uh, has a great uh, great amount of ventilation here, you see uh, around the entire shoe, and it allows for great airflow. So the good thing for that is in the summertime, when you are running, you get great airflow and your feet never really get hot and sweaty. Bad thing is in the winter time, your feet get really cold. Um, I do wear these in the winter time, but typically because they are so ventilated and so thin, I typically will wear another pair of shoes to the gym and then go ahead and put these on. I'll wear a regular pair of sneakers with socks and then put these on. Now they do sell socks to be worn with these Vibram shoes. So uh, they are available. I've seen them on Amazon. Of course, they're probably on other websites, but everyone goes to Amazon um, and you can find them there. They're the five finger uh, socks uh, and they are made specifically for uh, these shoes. I've never tried them. I've never had the need for them, but uh, maybe in the winter time, I might give them a shot to see how they work out. I like the lacing system of this. Uh, it's a single pull here. So you actually pull here on this string if you would and then there's a slide i'm going to show you this slide down tie that you press and cinch down and it secures the sneaker like that and then there's a little bit of velcro on the tip of the string that attaches to a velcro point right on the sneaker and it kind of stays like that when you're running obviously there's not that much slack in the string but you get the point so i usually have them out to let's say about here so you have the shoe like that when you're running 
stays in place. The Velcro is getting a little tattered, but it does stay in place there. As you can see, you can hear it's still pretty good after over a year of wearing these and uh, it's holding up pretty, pretty well. You'll see that the shoe has a natural curve to it, which um, it comes with a little bit of that curve, but it of course is um, accentuated as you begin wearing the shoes and become uh, more comfortable running in the shoes. Um, they do, like I said, they do feel like you're wearing nothing at all with just this very thin amount of sole on the bottom. Uh, now, you have to, and let me, let me just, while speaking about the sole, you guys can see here that they wrap the rubber up the toes and wrap that around the toes, which is actually very nice from a durability standpoint. And I feel like you get uh, a lot of good traction when you're doing box jumps um, and you're doing other different exercises in the gym, you're doing step ups, things like that. Uh, for road running, uh, I wouldn't recommend this version for trail running. They do have a trail running version, but this one is a great uh, gym or road running sneaker. And you see how much detail they've put into the rubber sole of it. Going back to the gym, love wearing these on leg day. I've come to find that I love wearing them now all around, every day, because what happens when you start wearing this shoe is you actually start walking differently. Um, and you actually start walking like you did when you were a child. When you were a child, most of the time you were barefoot. Maybe you would have had socks on, but most of most children rip their shoes off and are running around in their socks or just their bare feet. When you run in just your bare feet, and if you go out after watching this video and you do it now, run just with your bare feet up and down your driveway or up and down the sidewalk or in the backyard, you'll see when you run barefoot, you do not run in that heel toe where that heel hits and then the toe hits manner that a lot of us are taught to run when you're running long distance. Uh, most sprinters are running on their toes. Heels aren't touching the ground when you're running high speed. That's how I ran when I sprinted. However, long distance, a lot of people are trained heel toe, heel toe, and turn those legs over. Uh, in this shoe, you absolutely cannot run like that. You cannot run in that heel toe manner. You can't run where the heel hits and then you come down on your toe and then you press off. Uh, if you run in these shoes like that, your hips and your knees are going to be paying the price. The good thing about these shoes is that because they're not padded and because they're so thin, uh, you, it, it, from the standpoint of how it feels, it doesn't want, it doesn't let you run like that. Um, and which is a good thing because that's not how you're supposed to run when you're running long distance. You're supposed to run in a four foot contact first position. Now, if you just Google four foot running, you'll be able to see photos, diagrams of what that is. I'm not going to go into it here, but essentially it's pretty self explanatory from the standpoint. And I'm not going into the scientific end of it, but essentially it's saying the four foot area makes contact with the ground almost in a flat motion and then you lift off from there rather than the heel and then roll to your toe motion that a lot of long distance runners use. Now when you have thick padded heavy sole running shoes or sneakers you can run in that heel to toe manner and it's not going to beat up your body as much. So you think over the long haul running in that heel to toe manner with that heel striking first and then rolling up to the toe is sending a lot of pressure and is sending a lot of pain into your knees and into your hips and over time that's why so many runners develop issues with their knees and their hips so to avoid that and which is what i was beginning to experience to avoid that i was able to now switch to this shoe and able to now alleviate some of the heel, the knee, the shin, and the hip pain that was associated with running. And I was running in Asics, Saucony, great high level running shoes. And I was still experiencing some of this pain. Uh, many, many of you who do long distance running and you have the shin splints uh, know that pain. All of those things I experienced and all of those things have now completely disappeared since switching to the Vibram. So from the standpoint of how I personally feel with the Vibram sneaker and what I've personally benefited, I could tell you that 
firsthand that I no longer have those shin splints, I no longer have the knee pain, I no longer have the hip pain that I was experiencing with traditional running shoes. These shoes have eliminated all of those issues completely altogether. Um, from the lifting standpoint, when you're squatting, when you're deadlifting, when you're doing box jumps, uh, when you're doing any kind of agility work uh, with hurdles or anything uh, leg related, even when I'm doing the leg press machine, I feel like I have a better feel for the ground when doing squats and deadlifts and when you're doing machine work where you're pressing, you feel like you have a better feel. It almost feels like as you would with a hand being able to grab the ground if you were on the ground barehanded doing push-ups and you kind of be able to spread your fingers and grab the ground and have a better feel for the earth. You have a much better feel for the ground with the five finger design of these shoes, something that I absolutely love about these shoes. You just feel like you're more sure-footed when you're doing back and forth agility stuff, working with agility ladders, like I said, box jumps, um, hurdles. I'm trying to think what other things that I would do, but anything where you're jumping, landing, or you're flat-footed and you're going up and down, uh, these are absolutely unbelievable. Way better than any full sole shoe I've ever tried. And um, I tell people who were like me for years. I saw these, I saw these shoes years ago and I was a big skeptic because one, they just look weird. I'm not gonna lie, they look weird. You do get looks when you're wearing them. But these days you have a lot of people that are coming to come up and they're just gonna ask you. They're gonna say, hey, oh, how are those shoes? Do you like them? Um, do they work? And I tell people, I absolutely love them. They do work. My, my ankle, shin, knee, hip pain has all been uh, eliminated. Uh, since wearing these shoes and they do work you do have to change your running style and you do have to adapt to the shoe you have to adapt to that four foot running style and not that heel toe running style and like I said you can look into that a little bit more later um, from the downside the one downside of the shoe is because you're not wearing socks they can become really stinky um, wash them regularly. Um, you throw them in the machine to wash them. I know a lot of people soak them in OxyClean. Some people just soak them in a bucket of a 50-50 uh, water and vinegar solution. That's obviously a great way. OxyClean's great. Um, I, I've i tried them all. Uh, one uh, thing that I like is OxyClean with a little bit of regular detergent like Tide. Um, let them soak. Just sit, let them sit there and soak, and then I let them air dry. I let them air, air dry out in the sun. I don't, I've never put these in the dryer. Um, and uh, in fact, they've never been put in the washing machine. I've always uh, hand washed them. So um, I, I'm not sure, honestly, what the uh, care instructions are for these shoes, but that's how I've cared for them. And over, over a year now of running and working out five to six days a week in these shoes, and you could tell they are in pretty damn good shape. Uh, from when I got them to what, what they look like now, I gotta tell you, I'm like really surprised and I'm really happy about it. As far as price, a lot of everyone always asks, are they expensive? These shoes were about, I would say about 89 or 90 something dollars. Um, I got them online. Uh, you gotta be careful with the fitting. The fitting is in European sizing. Um, so you gotta kinda do the, uh, the, the conversion from your US sizing to European sizing. I don't know if the size is on these. Maybe, maybe not. I'm a size 13 in US. So in Nikes, I'm a 13. And this says these are, I think, size, I think size 46. It looks like they're size 46. Um, may not be a direct conversion. It may convert out to be a little bit higher. I always tell people if you're on the cusp and you're not sure with the Vibram shoes, go down a size, go go down before you go up because you want that more fitted feel. Now you don't wanna go down too tight because obviously you only have so much space here in these toes and you don't want them constricted. A lot of people ask, do they stretch out? Do they break in? They stretched out very, very little. From the over year that I've been using them to now, um, I would say they've maybe stretched out an eighth of an inch, maybe. So they do not stretch out uh, an, uh, an obscene amount and uh, they do break in nicely and become 
much more comfortable and I'm gonna get to something with that in a second. But uh, if you're gonna size, you're gonna try size down and see how that works out for you. Now, from the comfort uh, and portability standpoint, the one thing that's great is that they're ultra thin. When you go on vacation, you don't need to pack your big bulky sneakers and a pair of workout socks along the way. Um, you could uh, put two of these shoes back to back. I have the other one on the ground and you could, obviously they fl fl fold down super flat, almost to nothing. So you could put these in your suitcase and you don't even know that they're there. You also have the ability to fold them up like this and they actually fit in that little pouch on the side of your backpack very easily. Most backpacks have a small little pouch on the side and you can fit one or two of these in that pouch. And then when you get to where you're going, simply pop them open. They always come back to form and that's it. So it's a great, uh, you, from a utilitarian standpoint, pack and travel with them. I absolutely love them. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other downsides of these. Like I'm going to show you the the sole wear, haven't done that much road running. So here's what I'm gonna tell you about my first racing experience with these shoes. And as you can see, the sole's held up uh, very well. And those, those of you who wanna know the spelling of it, that's the logo on the side. So did uh, usually did between one and two miles uh, a day warming up in the gym prior to lifting. So it got to the point where I was logging a lot of good miles with these. I had uh, adapted to the running style, that four foot running style, and I felt good, I felt confident. So uh, recently I did a five mile race with these shoes. Um, the longest distance I've uh, ever ran uh, in these shoes. I had run further distance uh, in the past with uh, conventional running shoes, but never with shoes uh, like this. I gotta tell you, um, I paid the price. Uh, running for a mile on a treadmill was very different, or half a mile mile on the road, or doing some sprint work in a parking lot, very, very different than running a five mile race. I got done with that five mile race and my knees felt great, my hips felt great, my back felt great, my ankles and calves felt like they were on fire. I think I may have, it may have been my fault, I think I may have, because I saw that I had the five miles ahead of me, I was really focusing on not doing the heel strike. And I was more, that, rather than four foot strike, I think I was running more toe strike. And I think what that led was to me over exerting, overworking, my calves, my lower legs, and my ankles took a beating. Now, uh, the ankle joint itself wasn't the issue. It was the muscles and the tendon and my calf muscles all the way up from top to bottom uh, were uh, pretty shot, pretty shot uh, for about 72 hours and I paid the price. Um, I know what the problem was. I know what the issue was. I know how to correct it, but if you're looking to run a long distance race with these shoes, make sure you do gradual training runs working your way up. If you're just wearing these to the gym, if you're just wearing these to work out and do some agility stuff, you're gonna be fine. Long distance running, make sure you get a couple of one or two mile days in and then get a couple of three and four mile days in just to work your way up and make sure you're concentrating on that four foot running. Like I said, look up the principles. There's books on four foot running. There's a lot of people that are speaking the, obviously the health benefits to your body, but how that's the proper mechanics. It's how you're born to run. It's how you run like a child. That's why they say all these top uh, runners from places like Kenya who are growing up for, for all intents and purposes without shoes uh, um, in some cases and that are barefoot for such a longer period of time and they're running and walking and playing in these situations from what I'm reading, this is the theory behind it, they've become adapted to that four foot running because they don't have the thick sole shoes where they lived and where they grew up to adapt that poor running style of the heel strike running. 
therefore their ability their ability to go faster longer um, comes from that forefoot running style and you will see that if you watch race, race footage of some of these runners in these marathons you'll see how they do run in that forefoot uh, strike running style and how it completely changes the game so if that's something that you have the time to research i highly recommend it before buying these shoes and getting into long distance running with these shoes. A couple of blogs out there of people who ran in these shoes long distance and they give their story, their testimonial. I'm gonna do a blog on my experience running the five mile race for the first time in these shoes as well. But uh, colors, everyone asks why I got the yellow. I got the yellow because they. this was the only color available in the size I needed. Uh, I was looking at, but my old ones were just black and gray plain. Uh, when it came to buying these, these were the only color available. So I was limited to get the bright yellow. Um, I really don't care what people think about the sh color of my shoe, not really a concern of mine. Um, I got other things to worry about than other people's shoe color. Um, so um, I really don't care about it for, for me. So, um, but there's a ton of different colors for men and women, purple, pink, green, gray, lime green. I got the yellow because I had no choice at that time and I didn't feel like waiting until other sizes were available. But I gotta tell you, I've grown to love them and uh, uh, I've just, you know, they stick out a little bit, but they're great. Um, I hope that answers all the questions. I forgot to answer something. Uh, just comment uh, in the comment section. We'll try to hit up someone uh, either from our team or if I can myself personally, we'll answer those questions for you. But overall, um, if I had to give the shoe a score from one being the worst to 10 or zero being the worst, and 10 being the best, I would say I would definitely give these shoes somewhere between an 8.5 and 9. Uh, definitely um, losing a couple of points from the standpoint of they stink to high heaven and you know you got to wash them uh, quite often uh, because you're running in them barefoot and for also the fact that running on surfaces that aren't pure like rocky roads, trails, things like that, um, you're gonna feel it. Um, and also for the fact that you have to adapt your running style. But other than that, uh, definitely eight and a half, nine on that scale because these shoes are amazing. And if you suffer from any of those ailments I talked about, I would highly recommend giving these shoes a try and not a big investment. And uh, I think you're gonna like them. So comment below, let me know what you think. And thank you for watching this review. Hopefully this answers all the questions for the people who saw the videos and photos of me working out and saying, what in the world is on your feet? What's on my feet is the Vibram five finger shoe. Check them out, they're on Amazon, or you can just put it in Google and see whoever's selling them. I think you'll like them. Stay tuned for the next video from 221B Tactical. Until then, if you're on the job, stay safe out there. We'll see you next time.